Hi, welcome to Curtain Call. I'm Hetty Weiss, theater and dance critic for the Chicago Sun-Times. And today I'm talking to director Sean Graney. He's the founder and longtime artistic director of The Hypocrites. Now he's just into creating crazy marathon <laughs> projects, of which all our tragic, a kind of 12-hour marathon of all of the existing Greek plays, 32 of them, is going to be performed at your new space on North Milwaukee Avenue. Welcome, Sean. <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So, tell me just in a sentence or two what this project is. Oh my gosh, in a sentence or two? Okay, uh, it is a conjoined adaptation of the, like you said, the 32 surviving Greek tragedies into one continuous narrative that spans about 75 years. And it's um, three writers, Right, three Greek tragedians, the uh, Aeschylus, uh, Sophocles, and Euripides. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what possessed you? <laughs> <laughs> Aside from the fact I'm crazy, uh, I did, a few years ago, I did uh, the seven extant plays of Sophocles, Sophocles' Seven Sicknesses. And when I first explained that project to people, I was like, oh, I'm doing seven Greek tragedies in one night. People thought I was insane. And they were like, you couldn't drag me to that. I'd rather catch polio than go see that. Uh, we did it and people enjoyed, for the most part, people enjoyed it and they encouraged me to do uh, more. So I looked to doing more other, um, more playwrights like uh, that. I looked at Aeschylus because he only has seven plays surviving. And I realized that the, all the plays, with a few exceptions, fit nicely into each other. All 32 plays fit very nicely into each other and complement each other. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be fun to try to create this uh, contemporary festival of Dionysus for, uh, for our audiences. Mm -hmm. What are the themes of the play? What are the themes that obsess the Greeks? Well, the themes that obsess, uh, obsess the Greeks, from what I gather, it's um, uh, it's how people interact in society. How do you interact in a society with other people? How do you help other people? How do you help yourself? How do you exist in society when forces are at odds with each other? Like, do you honor family over state? Like, things like that. Like, these, force, these questions, I think, are what uh, the Greeks were asking themselves through this play, these plays, and I think that that's what I'm trying to ask now, is how do we interact with society? How do we live within a society? And, like, what is the best way to help people out while still getting what you need without being too selfish, you know? It's just these, these questions we've been talking about since we've... Although there are a lot of wars. There are a lot of wars, yes, but I even think in war there's the question about how you should treat your enemy. Like, so, in that has to do with the society of larger. Like, how do you treat not only your your uh, local citizens, but also the citizens of foreign lands. And not only the citizens of foreign lands, how do you treat the citizens of foreign lands that you're conquering? You know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like these are the questions about ethics and just general uh, uh, societal questions that I think are very important that not, not a lot of people are engaging in nowadays. It seems like everybody is uh, uh, very, a lot of people are very one-sided in what they think, and we're not, taking the time to get to know other people's uh, point of view. And uh, that's what I think that they were promoting, this idea of debate and conversation. So in choosing the actors, what, uh, let, many of them are actors you've worked with over the years. Yeah. But what did you need, aside from unbelievable endurance and mental capacity? <laughs> <laughs> that's an excellent question. I needed, uh, I just needed people willing to do it, people that could buy into the event. And uh, the cast is amazing, and I couldn't do it without without these people that I love and I've worked with forever. So now I'd like to introduce two of the marathon runners in All Art Tragic, two of the leading actors, Walter Briggs, Tian Domain. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you. What did you say when uh, Sean first came to you with this idea for All Art Tragic and the whole marathon 12-hour 32 play project? I said yes before I finished reading the email. <laughs> <laughs> because you had both worked with him before. Yes, I mean, we did Sophocles' mm -hmm. um, seven, sicknesses. seven Sicknesses, and since then, you know, we've been kind of involved with a couple of the readings, you know, as it changed. You're each in every play, or are you in only certain plays? Uh, well, everyone's in all of the parts, the four parts. Four sections. But the four sections, yeah, but we aren't all in every single play. What are your principal roles? Uh, Deianera, Heracles' wife. Uh, Loki, she's one of the seven sisters. I play Odissa, um, 
the female Odysseus. Exactly. And then I played Clytemnestra. Which is a very Which is exciting role. and fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and I, I play Heracles, I play Pentheus, uh, and then I play Agamemnon. So we so have a play, lot of stuff together. Yeah. Most of our stuff is You play together. mostly warriors? And play mostly warriors, yeah. Tell me your memorization process and your organization process mentally for all of this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just can you have to just keep working on it. I don't know. I memorize lines by writing them down um, in kind of a very specific way yeah. and then running them. But you know, we kept we got a lot of not a lot, but we got a, a fair amount of changes and a uh, you know, new words often. So we just kept doing yeah. it. We kept it. It's a little yeah. different this time because usually you have paper scripts and you're kind of you have them on the go and now you have a Kindle that we're just figuring out how to use this sort of button on a Kindle and then you get lost and you got to know where you are. Now the Hypocrites has a whole beautiful new home. We can see part of the set which is really on a grander scale than anything you were doing when you were in the Chopin Theatre basement, yeah. which I know is a favorite space. Yeah. Uh, this is a few blocks away, the Den Theatre's big storefront. Um, what does the new space allow you to do? It's exciting. Well we can it. have sword fights and not hit the ceiling. I yeah. mean it's really, I mean it's just really basic things are just blown up. I mean, we have, we can fit more people, so more people get to see the show, which is very right. exciting. So there are, on any given night, there's about 170 seats? I here? think so, mm -hmm. yeah. There's more space for us downstairs. We have a full, there's full dressing rooms as opposed to a little cramped. I bathrooms. mean, we would have, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's have bathrooms, bathrooms, there's a shower. And the show That's pan amazing. was so lovely, and we got yeah. to do such lovely work there, and right. you know, I miss, I miss a lot about it, but it is so exciting to get to kind of make this our own, and see what happens here. Right. So you have a very loyal and um, enthusiastic audience oh. and quite young in many respects. And I'm wondering, who do you think is going to come to this? Yeah, uh, awesome people. Uh, <laughs> who's going to come to it? I don't know. That's a good question. It's uh, definitely not for everyone. And I don't want everyone here. What I want, I want as many people as the, want the experience to come. And I want to share this work with as many people as want. But there are some people out there, there are some uh, haters out there that are just think that this is crazy and think that this is, uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't dare come to this. And that's great. You know, this isn't for everybody. I want everybody. I would love if the world were a place where everybody could walk into this door and spend 12 hours in theater and eat food and break bread with a stranger and have conversations about complicated matters with people that they just met and like sit in a chair and sweat and take off your shoes and like watch actors pour their hearts out. I would love it if the world were a place where everybody would enjoy that. But unfortunately, I don't think that it is. So uh, I think uh, uh, I think uh, I think there are a lot of people that would like this. I think a lot of people are starving for a uh, theatrical experience that goes beyond the norm of what they're used to. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. thank you, Sean Grady. Oh I'm gosh, looking forward you. to seeing it. <laughs> and thank you for watching Curtain Call.